Hey, welcome back. My name is Al, and this is the ZBrush 101 series. Today, we're gonna talk about a different way of like blocking out your characters. So if you haven't seen this video, be sure you watch at least the first part of how to sculpt a dragon head in ZBrush. The first video, I dive into the details of primary, secondary, tertiary forms, kind of break that down. The first video is hugely helpful, and that's kind of what we're talking about today. So in that video, I start from a sphere and then pull all the features of that dragon out from the sphere. Now, there's just some problems with that. So let's say I got a character, and I'm blocking things out. I'm gonna turn on Sculptures Pro. Let's do Snake Hook, press S. I do have Symmetry on, remember, go to Transform, Activate Symmetry, and this is going to be just some character. So I'm just stretching out with a giant draw size. This is gonna be the torso of this character, whatever it is, who knows. And then I come up here, let's pull out the arms, and it's gonna look super stupid when you do it this way. There's nothing wrong with doing it this, however. And then let's pull up a neck, and then, you know, we could do start shaping a head here. Definitely doesn't look great. <clears throat> And then we have a nice little reference right there, actually, that we can like kind of shape the front of the face, the head just a little bit more. There's the jawline. I would refine this over and over and over again. Go in through here. After I block some stuff out, you know, we can pull this down using clay build up a little bit, build up the chest, whatever. You can build whole characters doing it this way. There is nothing wrong with this. And I know in this very quick example, this looks really, really terrible. I know that, but just know lots of people start from a sphere and just pull out. There's a time and a place for that, but there are some problems. So let's take a look at a different example. Okay, so this is a clicker work in progress that I never finished. And let's go ahead and look at the geometry. We've got Dynamesh all over the place. We've got Sculptures Pro. Everything is connected. In my subtools, there's only one subtool. This would be, you know, synonymous with like starting with a sphere and just sculpting and pulling and stretching and doing that. Nothing wrong with that. I use it all the time. Lots of artists do. But the problem comes in when I want to make changes. So let's say I wanted to raise up these ears. Go to my brushes, go to move topological. Let's move this ear. Yes, that's working, but I'm also moving the back of the skull. So then you might say, okay, let's just mask this ear. Okay, we can do that. Hold control, left click outside my mesh to move that. Here is my gizmo. Let's just move that ear up. Clear my mask, come in here, fix this, do some re-sculpting. Okay, that kind of is a pain. Let's try this tendon or whatever it is in your neck. Let's say I really want this connection point to be way down here. So move topological, let's grab this, and we're just trying to gently nudge this direction, but it's moving the underlying form. You can see I need to do some, well, I need to do some smoothing to fix that. I would probably need to do some re-sculpting. And let's say the tongue. I would like the tongue to be sticking out more. I would need to come in here and mask this because it's moving the gums. So hopefully you can see already that like it is a pain in the butt to make changes when you just start with one subtool. So take a look at this. This is exactly the same model, except it is broken up into many, many, many different subtools. You can see that I'll start up here. I've got this bottom jaw portion with all the lips. I've done a little bit of detailing there. Top of the head is a separate subtool. Tongue, gums. Okay, the top portion of the gums. Ears, the pecs, all these muscles, tendons. You get the point. Everything is its own subtool, which is super, super helpful. So if I press expose, we can actually see all of these different subtools that this model is composed of. And then I can press expose again, just put it all back. But these are all the pieces that comprise this sculpt here. Now, the really nice Nice thing about doing something like this is that in my previous example of moving the ear up, all I have to do now is hold Alt and tap this ear, press W to get my gizmo out, and then I can just move this up. Symmetry is turned on, so it's just perfectly fine. If I want a little bit more control, I can unlock this thing, you know, put it right there with the ear. Let's do something like that. And I'm also going to rotate while it's unlocked, just so this uh, these rings are kind of in line with the ear. Lock it back up. And that's just going to allow me to, you know what? I really want it to be back like this. Maybe fold the ears back in and then tuck them in just a little bit more. Something like that. Maybe that's what I'm going for. But very quickly, I can make changes to the ears and it's not affecting anything else. Okay, let's go back to... This tendon in the neck, hold alt, tap. And the reason mine looks like this is I turned off line. Move topological, large draw size, and then we can just move this thing wherever we want. Whatever changes we see fit, we can make that happen. So I'm kind of tucking that back in. It was kind of like rolling along the mesh. I don't like that. So I'm gonna tuck that in to make it a little more straight. 
hold alt and tap and then i can tuck this chunk into itself so hopefully by now you can tell how powerful that this approach is by using many 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 sub tools in your sculpts so a couple things to note with doing this approach uh you can see that like the pecs here they're very faceted this is very low poly i can see very large polygons and the process that i do with this is like let's go ahead and hide these pecs just so you can see the process a little bit better let's hide those i am going to go to insert a sphere so i have dropped in my sphere let's press w move this into position and i'm just going to work on one side so i'll do something like this this has too many polygons to work with in my opinion so i'm going to go to geometry pull this down like really low like 0.1 which is super super low so low equals very very smooth remember that like a low amount of polygons is so much easier to work with and we can always add polygons later so this is a very low poly object but because of that it's going to end up being very very smooth and not as lumpy so i press w i'm going to scale this this direction let's go ahead and rotate got it press q to get my move topological brush and now i'm just shaping and i can only pull this so far before it starts to break so you see it's really stretched out right now so i could just press z remesh again there we go still very very low and you would take as much time as you need to shape these pecs definitely pull up reference because this ain't good right here there we go since i made some changes i'm gonna press z remesh again it's gonna give me different results but then if i press divide you'll see this when i need more detail i can it is just so much easier to move when when it's low than high when you're moving this stuff when it's really high there's just lots of polygons you'll get lots of lumps it's just really tough to work with so work with low polygons and then we can add more polygons later there's also something called dynamic subdivide it's kind of like a preview you'll notice i can just toggle this on and off so this is technically doesn't have any subdivisions this is just kind of like a preview and then if i apply that I get three subdivision levels. So, so we can just toggle this on and off to get an idea of what it's going to look like. So you can stay with a character like this that's really kind of low poly and just many, many sub tools for a long time. And the whole point of that is to nail down the proportions of your character. So, and what do I mean by proportions? I mean, where is this ear in relation to the head? The size of the ear, is it correct? Uh, what about the head compared to the body, the proportions? In our previous example, it's really, really hard to make those changes after you've got lots of polygons, after you've got some details. But with this, I can make any of the changes. I can stay here for as long as possible and then dive in and then we can like fuse everything together if we want to. Okay, so going back to like how you would start a bust or a character using this uh, block out approach, I am just under Lightbox, Dynamesh Sphere, nothing wrong with that. Uh, the very first thing that I would do is go to Geometry and then let's lower this really, really low, like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, somewhere around there, Z Remesh. Make sure symmetry was on when you did that. This is what I get. So let's just use this kind of as a quick model. So there's the top of the round head. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. So under sub tool, I can press duplicate or control shift D. So let's do that. Control shift D is in Delta. It's created a new sub tool, press W, and then we can scooch this down because this is going to be, you know, the lower jaw. Let's keep that like so. And then we can press Q to get back to draw. And then go to our brushes, press M for move topological, get a large draw size. And then this is going to be the front of the face. So really this doesn't curl in like that. So I'm going to hold alt and just push the front of this one in, hold alt and click the bottom one. If it's not registering, you can always click the image here or just get a smaller draw size that usually does it. And then with this section, since this is the back of the head, we're going to tuck this in, hold shift here is you know kind of that lower jaw uh in this very quick example let's look at this this does not look great so let's take flatten the sides of the head something like that same thing here this would be a not a great start but you can get the idea of what i'm doing by trying to shape this head out uh, to make whatever character that i want to make uh, I don't like how low this connection point is, so I'm going to move uh, this one kind of up. There we go. That's looking okay. So I've got top of the head, bottom of the head. You know, eyes are going to be in here at some point. Let's go ahead and drop in a nose so I can go to insert a sphere. 
press W, let's turn on symmetry. So transform symmetry. Remember symmetry is per subtool. So if I go to this one, I can have symmetry off if I wish. So it's not on. And if I go back to this one, it is on without me changing anything. So it's, it remembers uh, if you have it on or off for each subtool. So let's turn that back on, transform, activate symmetry. And then this is gonna be the nose. So I'm gonna press W. Let's move this into position. We're just gonna scale that down. You know, eventually I'm going to Z remesh this. I like to do it sooner rather than later. So under geometry, Z remesh, let's make that super low. There we go, just much easier to work with. Uh, position this however you want. Right now it kind of looks like a Muppet, but maybe that's kind of the style that I'm going for. When things start to get a little stretched, don't be afraid, do another Z remesh or increase this slightly and then do another Z remesh. So I don't really like how that looked. So I'm gonna bump this up to maybe 0.5 Z remesh. Gives me a few more polygons to begin, you know, continue shaping this very pointy nose. Okay, so we're back at this multiple subtool pieces. A couple different ways after the fact that you could run with this mesh. You could, uh, like, let's say I just wanted to detail like crazy, diving down to skin folds, skin pores, all that fun stuff eventually, right? I could probably go to each individual subtool and then determine if I need more subdivisions. So I love the position of this. I could press divide handful of times like yep that is good there uh that one's fine this one looks really low poly maybe i press divide good 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 let's do one more here okay let's call that good what i can do is in my subtool palette go to the top sub tool go all the way down to merge down and just hit always okay merge down merge down and we're just merging all these together now remember this has not been dynamesh or anything so while it's all together technically things like move topological is still going to move them separately so we still have penetrating parts etc but it's all one sub tool so you could dynamesh this this would be one approach let's go to geometry dynamesh i turn off blur and then dynamesh so you'll notice that this has now fused everything together and you kind of have these little welds anytime there's a transition which there's nothing wrong with that but let's undo that from blur down and let's just bump up the resolution a little bit so now i'm around 350. Uh, i have 1.1 million polygons those welds so to speak since i'm doing that go ahead and turn off sculptures pro i could come in here and fix those welds you'll notice this faceted look is still there this would go away had i subdivided more had i pressed divide more times on this chest piece but i can just come in here smooth that out if i really want to if it's not smoothing super well there's another brush called smooth stronger it's located in lightbox brush smooth brushes smooth and then there is a smooth stronger right here this is going to do the same thing as smoothing except just more intense so it's able to just break all of those that faceted look really really quickly granted going to destroy your detail so keep that in mind but i can come in here and really smooth this out if i need to secondly we have something like deformation let's back up right with that dynamesh we could do a polish over this whole thing and this is going to look at the whole mesh and it's going to polish everything. So those welds look really nice. I have lost some of the detail in the lips. So let me undo that. Maybe not so much, just a little bit. And it just polishes everything, which could be a good approach for you if you want to go this Dynamesh route. And yeah, then I could come in here. I can smooth out this transition. I can use clay buildup to, you know, continue sculpting. And now all those pieces are welded together. So an approach that I kind of prefer is let's just take all these sub tools. Once again, I'm going to go to give myself more resolution. I know this isn't perfect, but that's fine. Pressing divide where I need it. This is just so low poly. That's all good. This is really faceted. So I can go to like, I can go to a lower subdivision level. I can smooth this out right now. And I really don't need smooth stronger anymore. Smooth, I have the normal smooth brush back. Smooth that, go up a subdivision, smooth that. There we go. So very similarly in our subtool palette, we can go to the top one, press merge. You can say merge visible. It doesn't always work for me. So I'm just gonna press merge down, merge, 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 all the way down, just like we did before. And that is gonna give us something like this. Now I'm going to press W and I'm going to press this little gear, click the gear and we have remesh by union. So when I press this, it's going to look at my whole mesh. Nothing has changed here, but if I take a look like this looks exactly the same. If I take a look with these polyframe on and then the lines, you can see that it has done this little like stitches anywhere. One mesh penetrated another mesh, which is super cool. But the nice thing about this is I have great polygons. 
IZ remesh the pecs and all these other little pieces because that's a key to this Z remesh and keeping it low and I didn't have those nasty Dynamesh polygons to sculpt with so at this stage if I really wanted to I could take this whole thing um, I'm gonna press accept since I used this section here I'm gonna press accept it kind of makes it permanent it's all one mesh they're not penetrating so move topological is not just gonna move this these will not behave separately symmetry got turned off I'm gonna turn that back on and if I'm concerned that it's not perfectly symmetrical, I can always go to modify topology. So I'm under geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld. And if you can see a change, that means it wasn't perfectly symmetrical. So now it is mirror and weld, perfectly symmetrical. That's great. I'll keep it that way. Let's just do a Z remesh over this entire thing. So Z remesh, keep it around 10,000 ish and Z remesh. Now, one of the problems, um, and this isn't the greatest example because I've already started detailing the lips, but it's just the model that I have. I'm gonna lose all the detail in those lips, but that's okay. I'm not really concerned about it. If I were doing this for real, I would not have dove into those details quite yet. But as you can see, there we go. All the details gone, that is not a problem. Um, and I have this mesh that has awesome polygons throughout this whole thing, meaning I'm not going to turn on Sculptors Pro, anything like that. If I wanted to keep polygons or the, those groups, probably would have been a good idea um, just to help me in the future. So let's undo that. Keep groups. Everything's good. Z remesh. This is going to give me poly groups. So if I just want to grab those pecs, control, shift, click. Now I'm just working on the pecs. Remember, these are not like separate subtools. So this is just taking those polygons in that poly group and then control shift, click outside of my mesh to bring it back. So that can be super helpful, but this is all one mesh. Great geometry, quads throughout the whole thing. I would not use Dynamesh. I would not use Sculptors Pro at this point. Let's use Clay Buildup. Let's come in here and smooth that transition. Let's go ahead and do a little sculpting there. That's nice. Fix that transition there. Same thing on the back. If you really wanted to, you could have aligned your subtools up to flow a little bit better. But for me, this was working fine. And then this is really sharp back here. Let's smooth that out. And now I'm just well on my way to sculpting this whole character. And this would be permanent, right? This would be, uh, I've nailed down all my proportions and let's keep on sculpting my character. Now, to be clear, there's no like right way or wrong way. Just sculpting from a sphere, nothing wrong with that. Making many, many, many sub tools, nothing wrong with that either. Uh, there are pros and cons. And honestly, I use both. So if I am just sculpting for fun or just experimenting with ideas, playing around, you know, basically just sketching, I like to start from a sphere and just pull things out and then just sculpt like that for a long time. And then later I will do the approach of multiple sub tools. Multiple sub tools allows me to nail proportions. It It's just, I get a lot more control after the fact of making changes. Sculpting from a sphere is faster, but you lose the ability to make, make changes. And blocking things out is not as fast, but it's awesome to be able to just select this subtool, move things around when I need it.